Hello traders at CMC Markets. Welcome to a new update from RRG Research for Monday 13th of June. I'm recording this on Thursday the 9th of June. My name is Trevor Neal and I'm presenting to you from London. With Julius de Campanar we run RRG Research BV. Let's start with our usual update and look at how the major market indices have rotated. We start with the relative rotation graph of the major international indices versus, in the centre here, the MSCI World Index. Compared to last week when Julius uh, looked at this, everything is in the same quadrant as it was except for one index. Most of the US indices are in a relative downtrend and have a negative RRG heading compared to the MSCI World Index. The feature here is the CAC, the DAX and the FTSE and the stocks are all as a whole in relative uptrends. Over the past week they have moved further to the right from the improving quadrant, the stocks has moved into the leading quadrant. So compared to the rest of the world, European indices have got stronger. The Nikkei index and the Australian index continue to have relative strengths. The Nasdaq is on a very bad trajectory heading southwest, so that is weakening on a relative basis and also with very positive momentum. Um, so the world still continues to uh, dislike technology. And no sign of pressure ending for that. Now we're looking at the same group of major world stock indices versus the MSCI world but the sampling is daily so each point here is a day so this is the progress during the week. In contrast to last week when Julius was covering this there was a switch round a sort of counter trend move in the shorter time frame against the dominance of the Europeans on the right hand side stronger and the US on the uh, left hand side weaker. But here now this week you, you can see that, uh, that the situation is resumed that the uh, weekly and the daily message are much more in line with each other. On the right hand side we've got the European markets, yes we've got the, the uh, UK 100 moving across into the uh, lagging quadrant in the daily but as you remember in the longer term weekly it's further it's over to the right here. But all of these European CAC uh, stocks, the DAX, all in the right hand side. A little bit weaker but, but in the right hand side. Left hand side we've got the S&P, the NASDAQ, the Dow Jones Industrial Average and moving on its own the Russell uh, 2000. The message is here much more of alignment between the weekly and the daily messages with Europe outperforming the rest of the world average and the and US lagging. That continues to be the case. Moving now to the S&P index itself. This is a weekly chart of the S&P. Now last week we sunk hard down to this 3,900 area here picking up uh, support from this previous resistance and, and bouncing strongly up to now resistance at 4,150. We've got one, two, three lows there and we've hit that level now. Looking at the big picture we've got impulse, reaction, impulse, looks like reaction towards resistance. The MACD on the weekly basis is giving a very clear message downwards. So is this a reaction move um, in the established now downtrend for the S&P? Let's look closer by looking at the daily chart of the S&P. Here we see the, the bounce from 3,900 up to the 41250 uh, level and the uh, various support levels which have now become resistance levels and we are now hesitating at this resistance level. We look to the RSI for some help here. We did see the bullish divergence at the low. Julius had pointed that out. And we bounced strongly from it. But now we've got a small bearish divergence at this consolidation area here, which is a negative development. Given the longer term uh, strong downtrend that we've got in this market shown in the weekly chart and this rally to resistance and stalling at resistance. One is tempted to think that the uh, trend 
the longer term trend, the longer term downtrend is on the cusp of returning and a, a test of the uh, 3900 level seems entirely possible. So it'd be very interesting to see this time next week whether uh, this has turned out to be true and we have continued this pattern impulse reaction maybe impulse ahead of us here. So it's looking heavy, a lot of resistance above, stalling at resistance, diverging in the RSI at resistance and it looks highly possible that uh, resumption of the dominant trend about to occur. Energy and commodities have been a counter trend beacon of strength during this decline in the US stocks and the S&P in particular. Uh, commodities energy are up strongly this year. In fact, uh, natural gas is up 150%. The RRG chart here shows the SPY and the uh, sector ETFs against it. And we can see further to the right here is the energy sector. And look at that rampant movement we've had there. And um, so this is really outstandingly and powerful message of the lead of the SPY is the energy uh, sector. But let's have a look at this commodity and energy sector and see which commodity rather than which share as Julius looked at uh, last week when he looked at the RLG Russell 1000 Momentum Plus uh, CFD. In detail this RLG chart shows the active commodity futures contract uh, traded in the US versus the Thomson Reuters Commodities Research Bureau CRB index, um, which is used as a standard of commodities in, in the US. The sample here is weekly. We can see that there are lead, leaders and losers, and actually when we analyze what's on the left-hand side of 100 here, so underperforming the index itself, it is the agricultural and the metals, including the precious metals all on this side here, coffee, coffee cocoa, sugar, silver, um, the meats, cotton as well, all on this side. On the right hand side of the chart, we have the energy markets, heating oil, natural gas, WTI crude oil, uh, heating oil, all on the right hand side of the chart here. So this is really very clear uh, demarcation. Energy to the right, commodities, to the left, the rest of the commodities to the left, agriculturals and metals, including precious metals, uh, to the left hand side. What is outstanding is natural gas. It's the furthest to the right and the highest. That means that it's got the highest relative JDKRS ratio compared to the CRB index and also with positive momentum as well. The slight turn here doesn't mean much at all. It's outstandingly uh, strong. So let's have a look now at the chart of Henry Hub natural gas. We have talked about this uh, natural gas uh, previously and the significance of this enormous space between $2 and $6 and the breakout of it this year and uh, really the stunning move that has occurred since then. But big bases like this can support big moves to the upside. Powerful uh, message from the moving average convergence divergence which is still widening. Powerful move up pushing through any resistance there was around the $8 area and putting that sort of zone from $9 um, uh, to $6 uh, as also a support area. as a very strong, very strong chart. We're looking at a monthly perspective. So it does look as though it's going, it's pushing forward towards these resistance levels at $14 and $16. There is a little bit of a worry though. We have natural gas has got a little bit ahead of itself. The uh, breakout here from $6, that's very clear. And we are looking at the market eventually moving higher, but we've got a short term chart message here. We've got a high, high and higher high, but series of false breaks to the upside. Bearish divergence in the RSI. Higher lows too. So what is this? This is a bearish wedge pattern, a really classic reversal chart pattern. I'll be very interested to see in this very strong market, a really undeniably very strong market, whether we might have potential correction starting. And uh, if you measure from the height of the pattern here downwards, this would take us back to $7. I'm not saying it's going back to $7, not at all, but it is inside this extremely strong chart from a weekly and monthly perspective, we've got a 
sign that maybe it's done enough for now and some correction is due and maybe starting but let's just remember it's the energy which is driving it and in particular the nat gas which is driving us higher but this may have a short-term correct so let's wait and see but a correction is the right word not a reversal I thank you very much indeed everybody for your attention and from Julius and myself at RRG Research may the trend be with you